Hello, Oscillator Sync here. Artoria have just released the version 3 firmware for the Micro Freak. And along with some bug fixes, uh, they've also expanded the maximum number of presets. They have added a unison mode. And I guess the headlining feature is that they have added not one, not two, but three new oscillator types, which have been designed by noise engineering. If you're familiar with noise engineering from the modular world, you're probably already pretty excited. And if you're not, uh, you should be. So uh, let's dive in and take a look. So I know you're probably itching to get to the new oscillator types, as am I, but we should first quickly take a look at the Unison mode because um, you shouldn't underestimate how useful and powerful a sonic tool that is. So on previous versions of the firmware, we had two voicing modes. We either had mono, where you were playing one voice at a time, or we had paraphonic, where you had either uh, four or three, depending on which um, engine you were in, uh, voices of polyphony articulated through the single filter. Uh, so, back to mono. Uh, we now also have unison mode. And to get to unison mode, we hold shift and we tap paraphonic. And you'll notice that the paraphonic light starts blinking. And that tells you they're in unison mode. So we go from, from that sound to. So what we have there is four voices stacked in unison now. Um, just a great sound straight away without having to do anything else really. And this works on all of the oscillator types at the moment. I'm just on the basic waves, but we can go into super waves so you can have a super, super wave, I guess. Um, the wave table is really cool. That's pretty. Cool there. Um, yeah, so you can do it in any of the um, any of the oscillator types. Um, when you um, press Shift and Paraphonic, and if you hold down Paraphonic, you'll get access to the units and spread amount. So by default, it's just set as a uh, a small fraction of semitone, which gives you just a nice bit of um, spread. We can up that to make it sick, but you can also go all the way up into um, semitone. So if we go to somewhere around seven-ish, we've got four uh, fifths, perfect fifths stacked across each other, slightly detuned, slight different vibe than what you would get with the um, uh, chord mode because we can't detune the individual notes there. Maybe detune it slightly more. Make it sound a little bit rougher. Um, maybe let's um, just put that back to a sensible detune like that. So you'll notice uh, when you go into unison mode by default, you basically get a monophonic performance. You've got those four um, voices stacked on top of each other, but you're essentially playing them monophonically. But the last little trick that the unison mode has, um, if we go into the menu and we go to preset and down to a unison count here, we can drop the unison count from four through three into two, which essentially gives you different variations of um, duophonic performance. So now if we have it set to two, we've got that unison um, feeling there it is without unison and here it is with but we've got duophonic um uh voice stacking essentially which may also be useful if you don't want it super thick you know because sometimes you don't want it too thick Anyway, yeah, that's a really, really nice addition. Makes for great leads, for great bass sounds. Um, so I'm really glad that they have added that in. Oh, uh, just one final thought to turn it off, just tap the paraphonic button again. Okay, so let's check out these noise engineering um, oscillator types. So if we come up here, the first one here is called simply bass. And this is what the default uh, sound sounds like. So this oscillator is um, a quadrature oscillator, which means it's made up of 
two um, sine waves 90 degrees out of phase. Essentially, they're being combined through a ring modulator uh, and stuff. Um, read the manual if you want to get more detail, though. Maybe it doesn't give you enough detail anyway. So what do we have on the different three controls? Well, the first one is wave, and this will saturate one of the two waves, which is going to generate more harmonics. The next one is for fold, which is a wave folder uh, like you would find on many synths, but the classic, the um, classic West Coast paradigm. And it generates more harmonics by folding the wave back on itself. And these first two controls are super interactive. Lots of different ways that we can shape the harmonics. The final control shape introduces noise into the algorithm, but it's not just mixing noise in with the sound, rather the noise is being used to phase modulate the two oscillators in the algorithm. And what this does is really quite, really quite special, I think. If we push this up high, it sounds noisy, but you can even hear at that higher stage there that really there's an animation of the sound. And I think that's really the hallmark of these three new oscillators in particular is that they're, they feel really alive. And bear in mind, you have got all this movement here, and there's nothing on the mod matrix at all. And of course, this can do great basses and get really dirty. You know, we can even add on some unison. Actually, having played around with this for a little bit, I think this makes some really, really pretty sounds as well. Um, if we give it a bit more of a, a longer decay here, maybe go into paraphonic mode. Let me just dial back some of the extremeness here. Uh, maybe go to the bandpass filter. And that noise modulation just constantly animates it. Uh, maybe if we give it uh, a little bit of uh, filter LFO, it might be nice. Um, slow filter LFO. Maybe the fold control. That could be controlled by the envelope. That would be nice. So that's on the timbre. So envelope to timbre there. Less filter LFO. And maybe just get the wave, the saturation on the cycling envelope. Give it some reverb. I 
I think that's some really beautiful, fragile sounds to be explored in this algorithm. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So the next oscillator type is called SOAR X, and it's all based around modulating a um, SOAR sound. So um, with all the controls turned down, you you get a SOAR sound. Um, on the wave control, we have something called SOAR mod, which kind of sounds like it's doing hard sync. on the saw there. Very cool sound. Definitely something that maybe you just want to let's do it. Let's let's just have that be modulated by the envelope. So you kind of get that classic sync sound straight off there. The timbre control um, basically adds a, a chorusing effect. And the um, shape control kind of does the same thing as with the bass oscillating, that it introduces noise to phase modulate the um, saw wave in this case. Uh, so let's just um, turn off our modulation for a second so we can hear what this is doing independently of all of that. You can hear that it starts. To introduce that sort of distortion and movement in the sound, uh, which is really, really cool. Makes it feel really unstable and, and dangerous, which I just love. Um, cool. So um, what I think might be a, a cool trick to try with this one is, because the wave control kind of doing a sync trick it kind of means that um, at any point on this uh, control you've kind of got a harmonic of the root note that you're playing so if this changes each time you kind of get like a inbuilt arpeggiators of your patch so one um, trick that I had a little play with uh, was um, if we send a um, sample and hold to the wave control so we've set our lfo to um step to random and lfo to wave set wave somewhere in the middle and set the depth to max there we get that classic um uh, sample and hold sync sound but one um trick that i think um i haven't seen anyone talk about it but I quite like it on the Mic Freak, is we can kind of set up a patch so that that changes each time you hit the, the note functionally. Uh, and the way that we do that is if we set our um, rate right the way down. Now at the moment, that LFO is running in the background, but if we go into the utility menu into preset and into LFO retrig and turn it on, it means that it's going to restart the um, LFO each time we press a key, which means that it's going to choose any random point to start each time. So if we turn on the arpeggiator and um, just do a single note, we kind of get this uh, randomized arpeggiator, which is really cool. Maybe give it some uh, plucky filter. Some of that noise. A bit dangerous. Maybe 
maybe modulate that shape with the uh, psyching envelope. Uh, so that's psyching envelope timbre. Slower. Some delay, maybe. Hey, uh, let's, uh, let's make that unison as well. So that's just one note, just playing over and over again. Uh, maybe do some spice. So we can get some really cool stuff going on with that, with just a single note. Maybe let's send uh, LFO to the decay time as well. Just a couple of ideas there. Perhaps we, um, how about we change the spread as well on a paraphonic? Oh, yeah. Spice, uh, we'll get some higher octaves in there as well. Anyway, we need to get on to the third one. That's cool. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so that's that's a really characterful call. Um, uh, oscillator there. So the final oscillator type is called Harm, and this is a harmonics uh, based oscillator. So it's sort of related to the other harmonic. Uh, oscillator, but it does things in, in kind of a different uh, way. So quite a pure sound there to begin with. And as we turn up the wave control, it's going to change the distribution of the harmonics that are sat on top of the fundamental frequency. I'll find some interesting points along here, some which are consonant and some which are dissonant. Over the top we've got an octave, but lots of interesting places along the way, like there for example where things are ringing off each other just ever so slightly. So the next control, timbre, is going to control um, uh, its rectification of the wave. So it's kind of like a fold, but only on one side. But it introduces additional harmonics on top of the ones that are already playing. It's that kind of cool, especially with them detuned, it's that sort of cool, almost Hammond organ vibe. That sort of distortion, eventually it just starts to bring more of those higher harmonics and it becomes a bit more angry. But without sacrificing too much to the bottom end, which is really cool. Finally, the uh, shape control does what it does on the other two oscillators, which is that it introduces that wonderful destabilizing noise phase modulation. I love 
love the way that the noise rings off against the resonance as well. Just a really big sound. It's interesting. I like the I like the bass one for like twinkly pads and leads. And this harmonic one I think sounds great for like big low sounds. straight off the bat and that noise just constantly destabilizing the sound giving it grit and movement just that's a really happy place for me okay, and because of the uh, detuned harmonics it almost sounds like it's uh, unison already, but that does make me wonder. <sighs> Great. And of course we could set our spread here to an octave, so we have sounds that we can get going on there. So I like them backwards. <laughs> I like the uh, I like the harmonic one for for bass, and I like the uh, the bass one for for twinkly leads. But I think all of them are great, and I think really the hallmark of all of these um, three new oscillators is, is that noise modulation that adds that animation to the sound without having to do anything else in in the mod matrix. And I think that's so important to making. Um, making sounds feel alive and you don't need much in there just a little bit of that sort of destabilizing crinkle just goes a long way and it always sounds good with the resonance turned up high on the filter because it kind of just slightly pings up against the the filter and just agitates the filter as well as the the oscillator so yeah um it's frankly a a, a really pleasing update and i think that um from my perspective and from the kinds of sounds that I'm into in particular, I can just see lots of sort of eerie, droney uh, stuff that I want to do with, with the, the Mic Freak now. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, great update in my eyes anyway. Anyway, I hope that was interesting and or useful. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming synth fun. Um, this month it's mostly January uh, from me, um, but I will almost certainly be using the Mic Freak in a couple of jams going forwards because there are just some sounds here that I think really fit in with the vibe of what's going on in my January at the moment. So um, yeah, you will definitely be seeing some more of the Mic Freak before the month is out. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you are keeping well in these weird times. Till next time, take care. Bye bye.